Okay, so you guys, what's up? <sighs> I have something to share with you guys today. So I got a message on Instagram a couple of days ago and um, I read the message and the message kind of resonates with me. I kind of have an experience. Um, and, you know, I just read it and I said, you know what, I'm going to film um, and share with you guys what I think about this. And I feel like somebody that is watching, especially young people out there, kind of will be able to relate to something like this and just learn from some of the experiences that I had. You know, i um, just going to read the message. It's a long message, but um, I'll try to be fast and I'll probably leave it here so that you guys can also look at it and um, pause and read in case I'm too fast for you. So let's just do this real quick. Okay. So I got the message. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you and your family? Please, I have a question that has been bothering me. And I need someone older to advise me. I've been watching your videos for a while, ma. My name is da 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 da. I'm going to redact her name. I am 23 years old and I just graduated from the university. I am saying this so that you can understand me better. My question is about parents deciding what their children wear, even when they are of age what they can decide on their own. From experience, I and my parents fight a lot on this issue. Ma, I am a Christian and I know that wearing clothes that are revealing our nakedness is bad. I only wear three-quarter gowns because of my height and trousers, which my parents are against because they attend deeper life. Ma, I personally love trousers because they make me look smart. I just love it, but my parents do not like it and my parents are people that if they don't like something, they don't want you to do it instead of letting you decide on your own. If you like it, or not if i plate normal braids my mom will tell me to roll it up whereas i love my braids long and i am someone that doesn't like to pretend if i'm doing something i will let you know that i'm doing it there are many issues that we don't agree on my dad prefers me wearing big gowns like boo boo instead of normal fitted ones the way they complain sometimes chokes me it makes me feel i'm caged of recent my dad legit told me that he regrets sending me to school just because i wear trousers the way they talk to me i was like did i kill somebody because i don't understand i don't wear mini skirts i don't even like wearing trousers i don't even like wearing shorts because i am a tall lady i am just fed up I just had to cut the story short. My question is, at what age should parents stop deciding what their children wear? I appreciate if you read my message, Ma, and reply. Thank you so much. So I saw this message, and immediately I was like, yo, I like, I can relate on so many levels. Um, so if you didn't know, I was raised in a very conservative home. Um, a lot of people who, that know my parents now say, no, your parents are so cool. My parents are just liberal. They just became liberal recently <laughs> maybe like let me say maybe six seven eight nine maybe ten years ago but when we were growing up they weren't very liberal they were very conservative um and it also is because of their own upbringing it was just the kind of exposure things that we're exposed to and um so by the time they started raising us as kids that those are the things that they were using to raise us also i know for a very long time my dad did not like us wearing trousers i wasn't wearing trousers my sister or my mom even though eventually my mom bought my first pair of trousers for me so growing up i wore a lot of skirts and then um by the time i became 11, 12, I think my parents became pastors. So it was also a thing of um, pastor's daughter, you have to conform, you have to this. And I was a kind of teenager that, um, I wasn't rebellious, but I I just, I, I've said it before, I just always wanted to be cool. And I felt like my parents were cramping my style of being cool. So it was like, I, she, I would sneak and buy trousers when I shouldn't do that. I'd sneak and buy makeup. Um, and my mom would catch me and it'd be a big thing, you know. Um, I remember there was a day that um, I went to get braids done. I used to get, used, my mom used to let me get braids done during the summer when I was in secondary school. So I went to get braids done. I think I stayed so long at the salon. The salon people took forever because I was a child happy. So they took forever to answer me. And then I came back home late. And then um, I got home late and then my mom was like, okay. Uh, your hair is nice. It was like it was Ghana weaving. It was like Ghana weaving from year to year and the rest of it was like one 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 one. I think it was like pick and drop. I think they just call it pick and drop or something then. It was so nice. It was really really nice. And then um she looks at it and she's like, Oh it's nice and my dad was like mm. and then 
She's like, but you have to take it out. I was like, take, hold up, you say what? And she's like, yeah, because um, you came home late, you didn't come at the time you were supposed to come, and that was our own way of just punishing me. And I remember that I had an aunt that lived with us at the time, and she was like, don't worry, don't take it out, by tomorrow they'll feel better. So in the morning the next day, we went to kneel down in front of my mom to beg her, and she's like, you know, I hear you, but you still have to take it out. Imagine Ghana weaving that you did the night, the day before, the night before, that was so painful. And then I had to take it out. And I think I was supposed to be going somewhere, maybe see school or something. And then she gave me money to go and do another one the next day. It was just our own way of punishing. And even with the hair thing, it couldn't go past a certain length. Um, so, yeah, like I kind of relate on so many levels with what she's talking about. And, you know, so after, you know, my teenage years or whatever, well, while I was still a teenager, in the heart of being a teenager, I went to the U.S. to school. So I didn't leave with them till I became an adult. So imagine all my teenage years and then becoming a full-blown adult um, and then I'm coming back to Nigeria to now live under their roof again. Imagine. So me, I've lived by myself. I've done my own things for about five, six years and then I'm coming back to live under their, their, their home. Now, I struggled a bit when I first moved back home because, you know, it was a thing of whatever I wear, whatever I look like, it was always like, oh, mass or million. Don't let outsiders see me and insult me. That's, you know, my parents talking and insult me and say, oh, because her child schooled abroad, she lacks manners, she does not have morals, look at how she's dressed, look at what she's, she looks like, you know. And this was me that came back to Nigeria with full like i had i had my travels piercing or i have my travels piercing i have this well if just so you know let me even just break it down for you my mom did not pierce my ears she did not pierce my sister's ears because it was a personal preference for her it wasn't a religious thing it was just a personal preference for her because she i think she said when she was in school she had this classmates that were twins they didn't pierce their ears and they were they looked so beautiful so she didn't pierce our ears but then she said that whenever we grew up if we decided to um we could do that so when i went off to college i think i was about 18 19 um i was in the u.s i got my first um lobe piercing so i got this and then i got another one and then i got another one so i have three lobe piercings and then eventually and, then, and after a while i then got my travels piercing and now i even have like my elix piercing so i have three yeah that's six and then Traga seven elix i have one more somewhere that i don't wear anymore but i will not let you know anyway so imagine now coming back home to nigeria with all of this um and i'm wearing trousers i'm wearing um leg bracelets you know <laughs> and um I'm now having to live under my parents' roof. I'm having to go to church with them, going to events with them. Of course, you can imagine their, um, what do they call it? <laughs> their outburst. You know, it's like, oh, you can't wear that skirt. It's too, you know, sometimes I'll dress, I'll get ready for church, and my dad is like, that skirt is too short. You can't wear that skirt, you know. And then I struggled with it for a while. I'm like, do these people not understand that I have lived by myself? You cannot dictate to me and tell me that I should wear this or I shouldn't wear that. But then at the end of the day, like, I think what stuck, stuck with me and what probably helped me was just give to Caesar what he Caesars. So um, it was a case of whenever I was going to church with them, I knew that in their church, they tie their hair, you know, you have to tie a scarf. That time, all these funky hats were not even this popular or fascinators. It was like you had to cover your hair for real, for real. So if you were not wearing a beret or a beret, I don't know how you pronounce it you're going to tie a scarf or something. So um, I just had to confirm and give to Caesar what he Caesar. So I knew that when, I was going to, when I'm going to church with them, I have to tie my hair. I have to, um, you know, dress appropriately. I even had some church members come meet me then um, and say things like, oh, why, why am I wearing earrings in all my holes? Because I know my parents used to complain then and my mom used to be like, oh, this earrings, it's not like it's, there's, my mom would say, it's not as if there's a place in the Bible that says you shouldn't have them, but just, you know, outward look, outward appearance. And I remember that some church members actually came and told me, hey, you know, some of these young girls are looking up to you in church and all this, you know, your piercings and they're looking at it. That, and I'm just like, what are you, what are, what are you really talking about? But then that's just, by the way, but, um, 
I guess what I'm trying to say in essence is that, especially to this young lady, is just give to Caesar what is Caesar. Maybe I got married, I moved to my husband's house, she's... Like, these days, I'd even wear bomb shorts to my parents' house and they wouldn't see anything. Um, so, it's almost like when you're married or when you leave their house, if you're not living under their roof, like when I was living in school in the U.S., nobody was telling me what to wear, nobody was telling me... Um, what I should do and what I should not do. Um, I just, what I'm just trying to say in essence is that I feel like as long as you're still under their roof, as long as you're still living in their house, my sister is in school now, she lives by herself. I, I'm not, I don't think I've heard my mother say, why are you wearing this or why are you not wearing this? Because she doesn't live in their house. So I feel like as long as you're living in their house, as long as you're under their roof, I'm sorry, it's as painful as it sounds to talk about you just have to conform to their rules. You like wearing trousers, that's fine. You like wearing, you know, three-quarter skirts, that's fine. They don't like it. How about um, you, you, you get a place, like you said, you've graduated, you're doing your NYSE, how about you go live with somebody, maybe a friend, or, I don't know, somebody, because as the way our parents are set up, Right now, a lot of our parents, you know, are probably in their early 50s. I don't know if you're right now. A lot probably are in their early 50s, 60s, 70s. How exactly do you think you want to change or confirm them? It's, it's almost impossible. It is you that is living under their roof that will have to abide by their own rules. No matter how much you try to make them see that you know it's the inward appearance that god is looking at it's your heart that god is looking at what they are thinking about it's not even god though let me even tell you something it is how their friends are going to see them outside it's how their friends are going to perceive them let's not even go into the matter where these their friends their children are even doing much worse than you that's why i don't subscribe to the comparing your child to your friend's child thing because sometimes i look at people around i'm like hmm. I'll just go and be doing the things they are doing. They are smoking weed. They are this. They are doing. See, I'll just. I, so, <laughs> so <clears throat> it's just them thinking about what their friends outside or what their you know acquaintances would look at them and see. That's why you hear a lot. I don't know if it happens in any other tribe, but I know in Yoruba tribe, a lot of moms are always like, "Ma so no, ma this. Don't let them call me names. Don't let them this. Don't let them that." It's never always what they think because even if you ask them what they think they will tell you hey it's fine you can wear that but it's always about how the outward person will perceive them that's exactly what it is about and me i've now come to understand that i honestly don't want anybody to be gossiping about my mother or my father somewhere that is how i resolved my own issues with things like that i don't want anybody to be talking about their name somewhere oh because our child just came back from america they did it on the contrary my parents even got very good um pr yes i remember one of our district overseers one time was talking and he was like oh do you see reverend adejumo's daughter that's me do you see her even though she's schooled in america do you see how she did do you see how she dresses to church do you see how she's very um i was always involved in one thing or the other in the choir in this she's very active it gave my parents good pr and as far as I'm concerned, that makes me happy. Now that I'm in my husband's house, is anybody checking or cross-checking? My parents don't even ask me if I went to church. It's because at the end of the day, it gets to a certain point where your life is your life. You do what you want to do. So you're asking that at what age do parents stop interfering? I don't think there's a certain age. I think the age is when you move out of your, their house. Whether you move out to move to husband's house or you move out to live by yourself, because I know a lot of people are living by themselves and their ladies. So it's, you have to, something has to give. If you know that you want to have that total freedom for yourself, I just think that you have to move out. Whether you move out to a friend's place or you get your own place or you get married or you relocate, just leave their house. That's all I can say. There is no, there is no come and talk to my parents about this. No matter if I come now and say, Mommy, Koribe, you know, me too, I dressed like this and my life turned out well, they will just say they've heard and they will move. And by the time I go, they will say I've said my own. That's it. And this just reminds me, I think I saw a couple of days ago on um, one of the blogs about a lady that was getting married and... Um, I think her mom asked her to remove the makeup that she did on the day of, the, of her wedding. And I think what the lady did was that 
she knew that her parents did not would not take makeup on the day of the wedding. It's just, it's just like somebody that I know also. Um, she knew her parents were not going to take makeup or the kind of wedding dress that she wanted to wear. They knew, she knew they were not going to take it. So what she did was she called her makeup artist to come in the morning. They did the whole makeup thing. She, she wore the outfit she wanted to wear. She already planned this with her fiancé or husband to be. The cameraman came, took all the fine, fine pictures that they needed to take. And when it was time for the wedding, when the parents came to the, clean the makeup, they did it. she just stood there and they cleaned it. Because she already understood that this is the kind, this is the kind of people that, you know, raised her. And they took it and they did all the wedding things they wanted to do and she still had fun. Now, by the time she's posting her wedding pictures or putting her wedding picture albums in her house, she... It's the really nice pictures that she's going to post. I know somebody too that after their wedding, because their parents did not accept the wedding gown that she wanted to wear um, and makeup and all that, it, a couple of days after their wedding, they went to, what's the name of this, uh, studio, studio 56 or something, 53 or something like that. And they went to wear the wedding gown that they wanted to wear and um, makeup and, and they had fun and took really, really nice pictures. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that you need to give to Caesar what is Caesar. You need to understand. I, when I was uh, planning my wedding and I wanted my wedding dress, I knew I couldn't, there was no way that I was going to get anything revealing. Number one, I knew that the way my parents are in their church, the general overseer was going to be there. And I was not going to, you know, embarrass my parents in any way. All the big top dignitaries in their church, in their, you know, their first court church was going, they were going to be there. So I just knew that I, I wasn't, I can't, I can't embarrass my parents. So recently it was my father's um, 60th birthday and I knew that all the top dignitaries would be there. And even his colleagues at work that are top, 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 top people. I can't, I can't let them say, ah, share one more dark boy, I share. I cannot just allow it to happen. So even though I like that, you know, when I'm going for an event, I want to look like this, I want my dress to this, I want my dress to that. When it comes to my parents and people out there, I will confirm. I'm sorry if anybody does not agree to, with what I'm saying, but honestly, it just, it just creates peace. It just makes everything better. So what I would just say to this lady, if you're watching this video right now, is that I get it, it sucks, but unfortunately, there's really nothing you can do about it right now. There is really no. Now, you can now maybe come to a compromise. This one that your father is saying you should be wearing boo-boo. Miss, if I don't subscribe to you wearing boo-boo, you are 23. Why are you wearing boo-boo? Please don't wear boo-boo. <laughs> what I think you can now do is maybe your outfit should, like you said, they are three-quarter skirts. Wear three-quarter skirt like that, you know, let it look nice don't let it be too tight or whatever just you know you know what your parents like you know what they want it's like how we know you just know what your parents like so just i don't know just adjust and you know suck it up i guess that's what i can say i sucked my own up um and i guess we're in a better place my parents and i are in a much better place with our relationship um and then at the end of the day i don't know if it's just misha you look back at all these things when you're older you're like what was I stressing myself for? Look at all the persons that I say I have. I, can't, I don't even have earrings for all these uh, tiny, tiny holes. It's the day I remember that I wear it. Do you see? Do you see? Makeup that I used to sneak and buy, and my mother would catch me and insult me, and this is and punish me for it. When was the last time I did makeup? At the end of the day, you look back at these things, and honestly, they could be relevant in the grand scheme of things. For me, I don't know about you, but yeah. Um, please, if you have any two cents to add to this video please just add it let me know what you think if you if you totally disagree with me also let me know i want to know how you can be able to have this conversation with your parents and um where you can draw the line and things like that please let me know and i'm talking in general terms with like dressing and all those things i'm not talking about when they're trying to lead you astray or lead you to do bad things in this life or lead you to steal i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about the general wear this don't wear this type of situation okay Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, leave a thumbs up. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. I would definitely love to read it. Share this video with people that you know and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.